Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Side Projects. In this video today we're looking at five of the weirdest cars in history because why not? There are plenty of them. If this video does well, you can guarantee there's going to be a Five Weirdest Cars in History Part 2, Part 3, Part 19. Cars have come a long way since 1886, the year the first car was introduced to the world. Despite a slight change in aesthetics over all the years, all the designs are actually quite similar. However, there are those that broke the mold in favor of creativity and also function. I gotta get me one of those. This is a list of five of them. Dr. John Archibald Purbs believed that a one mega wheel car is more efficient than a four small wheel car. To illustrate his point, he invented, with the help of an engineering background, the Dynosphere. The hamster wheel looking vehicle was inspired by a Leonardo da Vinci sketch. It had a gasoline motor and attained a max speed of 30 miles per hour. Purbs told Popular Science magazine that his invention reduced locomotion to the simplest possible form with consequent economy of power. In theory, the Dynosphere looked like the future of high speed speed cars. <laughs> 30 miles per hour. However, if you ever rolled a tire down a slope, you know that the tire could never hold its balance and eventually would fall sideways. Purbs built the car to balance on its own when immobile. Unfortunately, in order to make turns, the driver had to lean with the monowheel and cross their fingers that it just didn't tip over. Another issue drivers encountered was a phenomenon called gerbiling, the equivalent of a teenager rolling around inside a giant tire after being pushed down a hill by his friends. Is he all right? So all of these issues were the reasons why the Dynosphere never went into mass production. First launched at the 1961 New York Auto Show, the Amphicar is a German automotive creation. Unlike the Dynosphere, the amphibious automobile was mass produced. Unfortunately, its production was short lived from 1961 to 1968, with a total of 3,878 manufactured units, with 3,000 of them being shipped to the United States. Built by Hans Trippel, a self taught automobile designer, this car was advertised as the sports car that swims, which was a stretch given that it achieved 60 miles per hour in 43 seconds. The Amphicar was intended mainly for US consumers. To prove its capabilities, Triple hired a stunt driver to cross the English Channel in the vehicle, which proved to be a successful marketing effort. One famous story about the car is that the 36th US President Lyndon B. Johnson owned one, which he used to scare visitors at his Johnson City, Texas ranch by driving them downhill straight into his property's lake while shouting that he had malfunctioning brakes. The Amphicar 770 was originally priced at $3,300 or $28,000 adjusted for inflation, Today, it's worth around $75,000. One creative idea, a spare Learjet fuselage, two years of research and development, coupled with about 40,000 work hours and a reported million dollars, are the main ingredients for producing a limo jet called the Limousine. The Limousine was built to be a party bus containing a minibar, a lot of neon lights, a 42-inch flat-screen TV, and a 17,000-watt sound system with speakers inside and outside, the outside ones being placed in the jet's previous turbines. Despite its weight of 12,000 pounds, that's six tons, it can even hit 100 miles per hour, courtesy of the 8.1 liter Chevrolet Vortec V8 truck engine with 400 horsepower. It was auctioned back in 2020, but it wasn't sold. The highest bid topped out at $600,000. The Surface Orbiter is an all-terrain, 17,000-pound, approximately 8.5-ton amphibious beast. Car builder Rick Doberton created it using a stainless steel Heil milk tanker. The stainless steel container was the ideal solution, with Doberton saying, I figured if it held 30,000 pounds of milk inside, it would damn well keep the water out. The car's purpose was to be driven and sailed around the world. Doberton spent over 14,000 hours getting everything right. The vehicle could max out at about 70 miles per hour on land and 10 knots, approximately 11.5 miles per hour on water. During their travels, the Surface Orbiter was the first amphibious car to cross the Panama Canal. It crossed 33,000 land miles and 3,000 ocean miles in 28 countries. It was stopped by the Colombian guerrillas just so they could take a picture with it. And the Orbiter was sold in 2004 to a Chicago car collector for an undisclosed price. It all started from a Play-Doh design that Christopher Nolan said looked more like a croissant than a car. The model was refined with the help of production designer Nathan Crowley. 
Nolan's vision of Batman's tumbler was a cross between a Lamborghini and a Humvee, combining both speed and power. A 20 auto mechanic team from Britain made the first prototype from scratch, and it took about a year to finish it. The entire body is made of fiberglass to keep it lightweight, while it was also sturdy enough to jump around and it's also easy to repair in case something goes wrong. To further compensate for its heaviness, the tumbler uses a 5.7 litre V8 engine, producing between 400 to 500 horsepower, the same engine found in high performance sports cars. With that much power, the Batmobile has the potential of max out at 160 miles per hour. However, it only made it around 90 miles per hour on set. Seven tumblers in total were made for the Batman trilogy, each one with a different purpose, and other copycats have been built by enthusiastic auto mechanics. One of the most famous replicas was made by two brothers, the Parker brothers, who specialize in making custom and unique vehicles. Back in 2004, one street legal replica was listed for sale for a million dollars. If you got that kind of cash lying around, it might be a great investment for your next Halloween costume. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.